So today we're going to talk about muscle spindles. Muscle spindles are this set of sensory receptors that are found in muscles that can convey information to the central nervous system about the length of that muscle or the level of stretch experienced by that muscle. So let's try to understand that like by drawing muscle spindles here. So you need to put your screen on your computer on full screen mode in order to see everything that I'm going to draw um, right now. So I start by drawing like a, um, a, a normal muscle. And the, most of the cells in this muscle are called the extrafusal fibers. Those are the cells that can cause the contraction of this muscle. Within that muscle, you also find a different set of fibers that are called the intrafusal fibers. They are in the fuse that is known as muscles, the spindle itself. So I'm going to draw these intrafusal fibers right here, and those are my muscle spindles. And as you can see, there are two, two types of cells here. The first one of them is chubby with several nuclei right in the middle right here, and the other one of them is very thin and elongated with the nuclei distributed throughout the entire cytoplasm of that cell. So the first one of them, the chubby one, is going to be called the nuclear bag fibers. The second one is going to be called the nuclear chain fibers. These fibers are my sensory receptors, and in order to convey information to the central nervous system, what they need to do is to be associated with a sensory neuron. One of these neurons is my primary neuron here that wraps around this cell using this spiral terminal ending, and this carries information towards the central nerve system. And because it's towards the central nerve system, you can actually call this the afferent pathway. So this information needs to go all the way to the spinal cord that I'm going to draw right now. Specifically, it's entering the spinal cord for what is known as the dorsal root ganglion. So this information needs to go on the back side of your spinal cord to enter um, your central nervous system. There are other fibers associated with this muscle spindles. There are secondary um, sensory neurons, there are secondary sensory neurons that communicate with this muscle spindle through this flower spray ending. So what's going to happen here, it's not that complicated. As you stretch this muscle here, as this muscle gets stretched, the stretch of this muscle causes these sensory neurons to fire information that is going to send all the way to the spinal cord. So now that you guys know this, I can actually say that the spindle apparatus serves as a length detector. So impulses from these afferent fibers are proportional to the length of the muscle, meaning the more stretch this muscle is experienced, the faster the firing rate of these primary and secondary sensory neurons will be. Now, there are more actors in, in muscle spindles. There, you have what is called the gamma motor neuron. This gamma motor neuron synapses with the sensory neurons at the spinal cord, and this carries information through an efferent pathway towards the skeletal muscle. But it specifically, it's going to innervate the muscle spindles. And when it does that, it can actually make those muscle spindles to contract. The question that I pose for you guys then is, can the activation of these gamma neurons cause muscle contraction? The answer to that question is simple. It's no, because no, these interfusal fibers are not strong enough to change the entire shape of that muscle. The fibers that can actually do that are the extrafusal fibers. So moving along here, what are you also going to have to cause the, the what you're going to have here to cause the the change in shape of that muscle is another neuron, another motor neuron that can actually promote the contraction of these extrafusal fibers. This is known as the alpha motor neuron. And again, carrying information towards the muscles, therefore through an efferent pathway. So, back to my mm, muscle spindles, you're going to see that these guys can actually see, um, see two different types of stretch. The nuclear bag fibers can sense the onset of stretch, and the nuclear chain fibers can sense a sustained stretch. But what's more interesting is that both of them respond to rapid stretch. Why would you need them like, to respond to rapid stretch? 
Well, again, answer here is very simple. You want to prevent injuries. How are you going to do that? Well, I don't know if you guys paid attention to this, but the sensor neuron also synapses with the alpha neuron. So once there is a, a stretch, a stretch is applied to these muscle spindle fibers, the information ascends towards the spinal cord and then can synapse both with the gamma neuron and with the alpha motor neuron, promoting the contraction of both the extrafusal and the intrafusal fibers. You have a reflex created right here. Information goes up, information comes down. So this reflex contraction can actually prevent injuries. It's very simple for you guys to understand how that prevents injuries. Imagine that you have your hands like facing up and somebody drops 20 pounds on, on your hands. What you're going to have is that those 20 pounds will promote a rapid stretch of the sensory neurons and that will actually fire the motor neurons and prevent your muscle from um, hyperextending. What is interesting though is that these gamma motor neurons can actually be are actually activated at a slower pace in relation to the alpha motor neurons. So you're going to have to rely on both of them being activated to prevent these muscle spindles from going slack. And why, why do you want them to, to, to prevent them from going slack? Well, you want to prevent these muscle spindles from going slack because if you contract the cells through the alpha motor neurons, these guys here, the muscle, the nuclear chain, the nuclear bag fibers and the nuclear chain fibers, will tend to go a, become a little bit chubbier. And because they're becoming a little bit chubbier, going slack, they're not going to be able to send information up. Why? Because they depend on being tense and stretched to fire the sensory pathway. So how are you going to co-activate both of them? That's my next question. That's actually not a complicated answer for that one. What you're going to see here is that the upper motor neuron will innervate both fibers. So information that's coming like from the top of, uh, of your brain, you stimulate both of them at the same time and you fire them at the same time. This one promotes the alpha motor neuron, will promote the contraction of the extrafusal fibers, followed by a contraction of the gamma followed by a firing of the gamma motor neuron that will contract these guys here prevent them from going slack and being able to make, give some information to the brain or to your central nervous system about the state of that muscle it's a simple concept and what i tell my students here is like to, to better understand how they work it's draw the entire um, muscle spindle apparatus. If you understand how things are wired, wired here, you understand how it will work. That's it. Thank you.